Hi everyone and welcome back to the Happy Heart. I am so glad that you guys came over today to see this video. Um, this video I've been thinking about doing for a while and I actually just wanted to sit and kind of chat with you and talk to you about my experiences and my thoughts. I don't even have anything written down for it. So I just wanted to kind of put this out there in the universe, hope that I could be an inspiration to whoever needs it on this day. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and let's get into the video. I kind of wanted to talk about this taboo subject called miscarriages. People have these. Um, this happens all the time. It happens at a really high percentage, and nobody talks about it because you're not supposed to announce your pregnancy until you're like 12, 13 weeks along. And then if something goes wrong, nobody knows. And it's an interesting thing that we've kind of put this in place where, you know, okay, don't announce your pregnancy. And then when something does go wrong, you don't have anybody that really even knew you were pregnant. My first miscarriage was, I want to say like March or April, I want to say, and it was before I ever had my son currently, and um, it never even occurred to me. I was like 24, but it never even occurred to me that I would like lose the baby, and I remember the first time the test came out positive, I was like, oh my gosh, you know, and it was like such a happy moment. But I was just kind of, like it never, it never occurred to me that this would happen. And you do hear about this happening. I do remember like working and like coworkers, um, you know, you hear like, oh, so-and-so had to take a few days off, like she had a miscarriage. And I, I remember hearing about that, but I just think it was something that people didn't talk about. So you didn't know like what you were supposed to do or how you were kind of supposed to go through it. So the first one I had um, was in March and it was just basically, you know, that had lost the baby maybe at like um, five or six weeks. It was just basically like, um, you know, it was just something that happened and it just happened really fast. Um, I never had like an ultrasound or anything like that. They basically just said like it didn't attach into um, my uterus. So, um, you know, if the, if the baby doesn't attach to the blood source, like into your uterus, you're going to lose your child. So I started having, um, this discharge and it was dark. It was like a brown, dark discharge, but it wasn't red. It wasn't blood. So I wasn't thinking anything of it. And I remember asking my mom about it and she was like, well, you know, like, I don't think, I don't know, you know, people didn't know. I did end up just going to the hospital instead of just going to the doctor's office. Um, I think I was kind of like confused at the time of like what I should do and I hadn't even seen a doctor about this. Like it just happened that fast. I had kind of waited a long time to take a pregnancy test and I remember them telling me in the hospital um, that if you would have just waited, like you would have got your period like normal and you probably wouldn't have thought anything about it. And I was like, really? And a couple days later I started just bleeding very heavily. And um, I had kind of big clots and things like that, which I know is TMI, but you know, what would you expect on this video? Um, and I remember being like, wow, okay. So my body was doing exactly what it was supposed to do naturally. Um, it was just me being at home, um, just kind of not wanting to do anything for a couple of days and, you know, just kind of just hanging out, bleeding. And I was just emotionally kind of just spent. I really didn't know what to do and it just never occurred to me that this could happen. So I was like, okay. And I remember telling like my husband's um, family had text or something and they said that it was something to the effect of like, well, how come you didn't tell us? Why didn't we know? And you know, like I wish, and it was ruder than that, but it was like, I was going through this really hard time, but they tell you not to tell anyone. And you know, I guess I was, it was just hard. 
that was particularly difficult, but I do remember being able to kind of just go on and be okay with it. Um, because they kind of explained to me that because it didn't attach, it was never there and things like that. So, um, I felt a little bit better about it, but I think regardless, you kind of have to like go through your, your losses. And I just remember kind of just being sad and obviously crying and, um, it just didn't occur to me that this was even possible, that this would even happen. So the next pregnancy I had um, was my son, um, who obviously was um, born. And that's a whole nother story in itself. But um, we went in at seven weeks. My husband was a Marine at the time, so I remember I started having that same brown discharge and we went into the Naval Hospital and said, I need to like have this ultrasound I need to see because I was about seven weeks at the time I was like I just need to know like if this is gonna happen again like I remember just 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 I just want to know and we went in there and there was a heartbeat and that was the first time that I'd ever seen anything like that so I was like okay okay and I felt you know good about that he was born everything was good I tried I never I never took birth control um, and I just wanted to have as many children as I could have. I know that even just sounds crazy, but I just wanted to have as many as the God would give me. Um, I felt like, you know, I knew I wanted to have multiple kids, and so it didn't really occur to me to want to even wait. And I was just kind of gung-ho, I guess you could say. And I wasn't scared. And I just thought, okay, you know, I want to I wanna have another one. So I didn't take any birth control. And we just weren't getting pregnant. And part of that was my husband did deploy. So obviously, you know, he wasn't there for about nine months, I guess. So, you know, obviously, you know, we couldn't have conceived then. But after that... Just kept trying and trying and I didn't really think anything of it because I knew kind of the process and I just thought, you know, it, you're only like fertile, you know, so many days in the month and all that stuff. And it took us a while to have our son and it never occurred to me that there was anything wrong or anything like that. So I just decided to just keep trying and life just kept going on and, you know, I had this adorable awesome baby and he was about two at the time and I got pregnant again and I was so excited and it was not like the best time but I was like you know what this is okay and it was around I want to say like Valentine's Day so my son would have been almost three at the time but I was like oh no this is perfect like you know they won't they'll be far enough apart but you know this will be great and I told uh, my bestie and him, you know, obviously I told my husband, my bestie, and my mom. So I really tell a lot of people. And then for some reason, just kind of randomly, um, very early on, I think like six weeks-ish, and when you go through the military, they don't even see you till you're like 12 weeks. Like they won't even give you an appointment. So, or at least in my case, they didn't. Um, so you don't go in, like, early. Like, you go in and take a test to, like, say you are pregnant so you can get an appointment with an OBGYN. But that's all they do for you. But then about 12 weeks, they schedule you a full appointment. So I didn't think anything of it. Um, I started having pain in my left shoulder. And all of a sudden, I started kind of just spotting. And... I was like, okay, and, um, you know, didn't really know what to do, but I remember having to, like, call my husband to come home. He had duty, and I remember being like, you got to come here, and I, so I called my bestie, um, who really wasn't my best friend at the time. I just, well, I knew that she would come to my house, and I knew I had to go to the hospital, and so um, she came over, hung out with my son. I went to the hospital. They couldn't really, I remember just being like, they couldn't really figure out what was going on because my cervix was closed. Um, they could like hear 
they couldn't hear a heartbeat, but they said like that could be normal. Like you could just be um, not as far along as you think and you know this and that but you were I was pregnant and so basically in this case they have to like make sure your levels are going up so I left the hospital um was happy about the fact that like my cervix was closed so it was a pregnancy it was um there and I said okay um followed up with my regular doctor of course and um went and had they tested your blood to make sure your levels were going up. My levels were going up and your um, your blood level is supposed to double, I think, every other day. I want to say that's correct. And my levels were going up. They gave me an ultrasound. And I remember, like, you could see the ultrasound far on the wall, like a TV on the wall. And I remember the lady, like, leaving. And she was like, hold on, I'll be right back. And I was like, okay. And, um... They were, you know, they were looking, 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 and I remember it hurting, like the internal ultrasound, if you guys have had that done, which, you know, if you've had a baby or done anything like that, you know how that goes, and I remember it hurting, and I was like, I don't think this is supposed to, like, hurt, and I just remember, like, I felt like the probe that was inside me was like, yeah, oh, it was terrible, and... Um, but I remember seeing something on the screen. So I was like, oh, you know, that must be it. And you know, you don't know what you're looking at. You're so like, I don't know, you know. And I think I was like 27 at the time. And I feel like, but it, there wasn't, um, I just felt like she was super upbeat and nice that I would have known if there was something wrong. I just would have known. And she came back in with the doctor and she said look at this and they were like with the little probe again and I was like oh my gosh can we get this done um and the baby was in the tube so I had an atopic pregnancy on my right side and atopic pregnancy means that the the baby uh is stuck in your fallopian tube and there's nothing you can do about it there's nothing you can do to save it you can't move it there's, there's nothing you can do about it. Um, luckily, now they can either give you medicine that will shrink it and your body will expel that naturally, or they go in surgically and they cut the tube, they take it out and they repair your tube. Um, if it grows too big, they do have to take your whole tube out though. So um, I just remember being like, okay, okay, like, okay with everything. And then I went in to change and I looked at myself in the mirror and I was like crying, but like quiet. Like I didn't want anyone to know that I was like hurting. And I just like sobbing like the quietest I could. And I like got dressed and like came back out and I was just, okay, okay, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. And my husband was out there, so it's not like, but I didn't want to like walk out of this office in tears. Like I was just like, you know, get yourself together. And um, I had to go have this shot. So I went and had this shot. Um, they, I think they might've gave me the shot twice. I can't remember, but it's a shot to basically shrink it. So you're essentially killing it. And, um, to let your body naturally expel it. And I remember feeling awful for years, for years, you guys, for years, y'all. I felt terrible. I felt like I had killed this kid. There was nothing I could do. If, if this child kept growing in my fallopian tube, it would kill me. And there was just nothing. There was nothing I could do. And I remember just being so upset, like, it didn't matter. There was nothing I could do. Like I couldn't fix this. There was nothing I could do to fix this. And just being so sad. And finally I ended up going back. They were like, it's not working. We're going to have to do surgery. And they did surgery like the next day, which was like super scary because then you go for surgery. What's the first thing they ask you? Are you pregnant? I'm like, well, yeah, that's why I'm here. And I was just like, could you read the chart before you go get your patient? You know, I was so like, I'm trying my best here. Come to find out, they did the surgery. Everything was fine with the surgery. Um, 
and I didn't feel very whole. I remember having just a lot of like weird pain and it was probably like scar tissue, but I didn't know it. And um, they just kept saying like, it's okay, it's no big deal. And I was like, okay. Um, and come to find out years later, like that tube was detached and that's probably why I had more pain. Um, but I didn't really know. And I wish that I would have even thought about that. I just didn't know. I had no idea. And when you look at the tubes in, um, say, like an x-ray or something like that, they look like as thin as a shoelace. So there was really, even like the surgeon probably did the best he could, but I mean, gosh, it's just so hard, you know. And I almost like just wish I would have known it was detached instead of thinking that it was fine. So anyway, um, went on with my life, but had a really hard time for months. I remember just going through the motions. Like I would pick my son up from daycare, I would go to work, um, and I was just like a zombie. And I just felt like I could only do what I could do. And I was really focused on having more children. And I was really surprised that I couldn't have any more. I was really um, like discouraged. And I was sad and I just felt like grief. And I remember staying in bed longer than I probably needed to after the surgery. Um, it's hard like day one, day two to like set up because you have these cuts. Um, they did laparoscopic surgery so it's not very invasive or anything. But you use kind of your abs for a lot. And I just remember it, you know, like kind of laying in bed and just not wanting to get up. And I think I didn't leave my room for like two days. Like I was just, I was just not having it. I remember like watching stuff on my computer like in bed and I just didn't leave. And, and people were so nice to me and you know, our, our church family kind of gathered around us and brought us food and stuff. And it was just a hard time. It was really difficult. Um, and months later, it was really difficult. Years later, I would have to say, like, it was still difficult. I carried around the grief of, like, I felt like I had killed my child. I felt like, even though I didn't, um, which is, like, so absurd in your head, like, why you would think this. Um, I felt like, you know, just like, I didn't know how to, like, function in the world anymore. It was just like, they were there, they were alive, I heard their heartbeat and they couldn't survive and there was nothing that I could do. And it was just a lot of prayer. It was a lot of like, God, you have to fix this. I can't do it, you have to do this, you know? Like, can you just change my heart? Can you fix me? And I think he was using it all for his good. All of it for his good and I just, I didn't know. I was in the storm, like, I can't see. But he was using it all for his good. Oh my gosh, tons of things happened that wouldn't have happened if I didn't go through that heart-wrenching experience. Even like the heart-wrenching grief of it. Um, tons of stuff would never have happened. And so I think sometimes it's hard to be in the storm, but you have to remember that you know you can only see a piece of the puzzle you don't have the big picture and even in your grief you have to remember that as well I so I ha actually conceived again when my son was four and I was super excited I waited so long y'all for that pregnancy test I didn't take one and then I like it did come out at first um, and I kept thinking, but I was still late, and I'm like, okay, okay. And I waited, like, that thing, that thing didn't turn for a while. It was like a good, it was a while. And I thought, that's okay, it's okay, like, um, you know, it's gonna be all right. And it was like six, eight weeks in, and it was finally turning. I can't remember what it was, but I knew I had waited a while. And I was like, okay, this is all right. And when it finally turned positive, I went and confirmed it at the doctor. Um, you know, super excited, super happy. And then once I confirmed it, not, a, no joke, y'all. Two, a, like the next day, a day, like I don't even think it was two days. And I started spotting. 
I was like, I waited. Are you kidding me? Like, I was so upset. <coughs> and I didn't know what to do. Like, quite honestly, I had no idea. I was like, are you kidding me? I have to go through this again? Come to find out, um, when they took my levels, they were really low. Like, super low. And I didn't know anything about levels and numbers and things like that. I think they were like 30. You know, um, and they said, well, let's just see and we'll just track your levels. And my levels kept going down. And they just have to, they have to make sure your levels go back to zero. Um, like your blood work levels. And they take your blood usually every other uh, day when there is like a threat of miscarriage. So they're either looking, are they doubling, are they going up, or are they going down? And so when you do miscarry, they, you do have to go in and have these done. At least I did. And my level, it was like crazy low. And I didn't know how low that was at the time, but it was really low. And I remember this doctor just like hugging me and I was like, can you just get away from me? Like, there's nothing, like seriously, like this is happening again? And I was like, well, I don't understand. Like I had a topic, I've had two miscarriages now, but I had my son, like, and they were like, no, this just happens. This just happens. Life just, this is okay. And I'm like, this doesn't seem right to me. And your gut, I will tell you, always follow your gut. Your gut knows. And I was like, this doesn't seem right. They're like, no, it's right. Everything's fine. I'm like, no, it doesn't seem right. Sure enough, there was something wrong. Um, and I kind of almost just had to like sweep that under the rug. And it was basically like the baby hadn't attached. It was the same kind of a thing. It was the same type of thing I think that the baby hadn't attached. Um, although this could have been something where I found out later that there was a cause and the baby could have attached and like um, I could have miscarried. Like uh, I was probably naturally miscarried too. So I just had to naturally miscarry and we were moving and it was um, just a couple months before we were moving and I was like okay so we moved and we moved to the state of Tennessee and I went to a random doctor you all random and I went to this woman she was an Asian woman and I was like this is happening to me I don't feel like it's right I can we just do can we test for anything and everything like what do you what what can I do and she said, well, I'll, I'll test for everything and we'll just see what comes back. And she's like, no promises. This could all come back fine. And I said, okay, no joke. They took 17 vials of blood. <laughs> and she did, she tested for everything. Um, anything and everything. It came back that I had a blood clotting disorder. I had factor five and a few acronyms after that. So she was basically saying that, you know, your blood is clotting, the baby is attaching, but then the blood um, that brings nutrients to the baby uh, is bringing like big clots of nutrients. It's not working. This is somewhat common from what I understand. And there's a way to still conceive and have children. Um, you have to give yourself shots of blood thinners. Um, she did advise that I take aspirin basically every day day for the rest of my life and um, they sent me to like a genetic doctor who literally told me the same thing it was kind of a waste of time I do remember that um, and um, so I, at least I had an answer so she was like this is fine like you get pregnant we'll prescribe you these shots and it was um, a blood thinner it started with an L I think it was called Leviquin and you give yourself a shot every day or couple, I think it was just once a day and in your stomach which sounds ridiculous but y'all I was really wanted a child and I didn't care so um I was like I'll give myself the shot no problem and I remember my my husband like you want me to do it for you I'm like no I want to do it myself and like I would kick everyone out of the bathroom type of thing so I did get pregnant again and my levels were going up and I took the shots I was super excited I was like this is this is gonna happen. My kid was like five at the time. He's nine now. And I said, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this. This is gonna be great. And y'all, I um, 
went in and I, my levels were going down. And I was like, what? So I had all of this and I was just like, really? She was like, it's okay, we just didn't catch it in time. Like, and I was like, all right. You know, so discouraged, like ridiculously discouraged. Then I got pregnant again. Like, apparently I didn't have a, you know, I was trying, y'all. Like, I'm looking at when my dates are and all this. I'm trying. I did get pregnant again. Um, and I was leery, leery. I kept going in. As soon as I would get that test, we would, every other day, they'd test my blood. Every other day, I'd be going in and getting stuck. And I was like, I don't care. I don't care. Um, and I was like, she goes at this certain level, then you will give you the shots again. I said, okay. They gave me the certain level. I took the shots for like five days. Um, I go in like so excited. I'm like, all right, I'm good. We're going to go in and have an ultrasound. Make sure everything's good. Um, one of my pregnancies, they oh or a couple of my miscarriages, they always do an ultrasound and, um, you know, because they have to check everything and there was no baby there. They are like, there's no baby here, you know, type of thing. Like it had already, um, kind of nature had already kind of taken its course and there was nothing there. This particular uh, time we go in and I'm thinking, I'm fine, fine. No, they're like, there's no baby in there. I'm like, where's the baby? where is it? And they're like, we don't know. Cause like my levels were like 10,000 at this point that nobody knew. Um, I am, and they like rooted around, searched around. They found the baby. They didn't know if it was attached to my stomach. They didn't know if it was attached to the tube. They couldn't get like, it was just hard to see. I could hear the heartbeat though. I heard it and I just sat there and cried on the table. Like, I just knew that was the only time I was gonna probably hear that heartbeat. And, you know, that this wasn't gonna work. They tried to kind of give me some hope um, because they weren't exactly sure where it was and it didn't matter. I ended up getting home and she called me and said, um, we have to schedule you for surgery tomorrow. There's no way we have to do this. And I said, okay. And she had kind of like consulted with some other colleagues and things like that thinking like if it was attached to a blood source could it live outside the uterus like what could we do um even if we could get you to six months like they they really were trying and i think when they just looked at the footage of it they could see um that this probably wasn't going to happen so literally it was like two in the afternoon and she said six in the morning come to the hospital i said okay and i had surgery again the surgery was so bad this time that um, they had to take the whole tube and it, they just said it was mangled and um, you know there there was nothing I could do so they took the whole tube and I was the depths of despair depths of despair oh my goodness um, and I just told God you have to fix this I don't know what to do but you have to fix it and God did he fixed it he took he took all the he took the piece from me. It was, he just, he did fix it all. And that is like a whole story in itself, y'all. Um, I did have the test done where they shoot the dye through you to see if um, the other tube was open because during that uh, surgery, she said, I think the other tube is detached. And I said, oh my gosh, you're kidding me. Because if you have one tube, like you have a shot of having another child didn't have one you know I was like oh, this is detached there's nothing I can do um, and they wanted to go in and take the other tube I've still never done it it's years later still never done it um, I just I just never wanted to but um, and that test was horrible and invasive it hurt ridiculously bad so um, I just never wanted to go through anything more and at that point, it was like, you can't have any more children naturally. So I had two atopics, I had numerous miscarriages, and I just had a really hard time. But I feel like that was okay, like that was my story. And I got 
this amazing child that I didn't think that I should have ever got. Um, I had no idea that I had this blood clotting disorder. I didn't know it was genetic. My mom didn't know about it. My grandmother didn't know about it. Um, nobody in my family knew. And, you know, I had, I had received this gift that I probably shouldn't have in life. And I really had to look at life like that. And I probably would have done IVF or gotten another route if I didn't have my son already. Um, but I've always just fell at peace with what God had given me. And he really gave me so much peace about it. And he kind of gave me this, sounds crazy, but like he gave me this um, kind of, he really gave me peace that like, all of my children were in heaven with him, that he's got them, that you don't have to, you know, I didn't have to worry. And, um, but I remember feeling awful. I remember not being able to talk about it. I remember people calling me privately, telling me they were pregnant because they didn't want me to hear um, through the grapevine because they didn't want it to hurt my feelings. And um, I had a lot of years where it wasn't okay. And now I feel like I'm, I'm better. And that's why I kind of wanted to share my story with you guys that it's okay to grieve. It's okay to grieve the loss of an unattached um, pregnancy. It's okay to grieve all of it. And you have to grieve in your own way, in your own time. And everybody has similar stories. And we should all be there for each other and kind of help each other through it. So by me telling you, you know, this is what happened to me, you know, maybe it, maybe it helps you. Maybe you're going through it right now and you're just like, I don't know what I should do. But I really just wanted to put this out there in the universe and let you know that you're never alone, that you're not alone, that tons of women go through this and that, you know, everything in life is a purpose and we don't have the full picture but you will get through this storm. Thank you guys so much for coming over, watching this video, letting me share my story with you, and I hope that it inspired you all in some way. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see y'all in my next brand new video. Bye for now.